All right, camera's on you. Is it? Is it on? Yeah. Yes, we're, okay. we're live. Um, throughout the years, people have uh, have written in and, and asked, you know, about the books that I like, the books that I use in, in my library, and things like that. So um, I'll just show you uh, some of my favorite uh, works. Well, let me just show you how, what, here's what I do. So when I'm looking at a text, I will read through it several times, sometimes read through the entire book, the text, get a general idea of, of everything. And then let's say it's uh, seven verses, and I'll go through and I'll just, I'll, I'll look at it, I'll see the relationship between the different verses, I will uh, maybe draw up some sort of an outline, look at the larger points, define um, words, whether Hebrew or Greek, and just go through it over and over and write down thoughts, 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 and come up with this is what the text seems to me. Then what I'll do is something I believe very strongly in, and that is this. I believe that one of the principles of hermeneutics is that we should always do our theology in the context of the church. And what do I mean by that? That we should do our study of the scriptures in company with those uh, great men and women of God down through the ages who have believed that the Bible was the inspired, inerrant Word of God, and they devoted their lives to studying it. And so here's what I'll do. After I've finished most of my work, I'll do this. Uh, this section right here, these are uh, commentaries. A lot of them have to do with original languages. So they're commentaries of individual books. Um, I don't have a lot of them, I'm, I'm very select. Um, but I'll deal with stuff that, that is really good with regard to the languages. Um, the, the New American Commentary. Um, I have a lot of things from the uh, New International Commentary on the Old Testament, New International Commentary on the New Testament. Um, and so, uh, just different works, and by individual authors also, for example, uh, D. Edmund Hebert are, are other men who are really good in the Greek, or someone like um, Edie here, an old Scotsman, um, that's helpful in Greek. I'll look at, you know, Linsky, um, he's very, very helpful. Here's the old, uh, the old standard conservative set, Kyle and Dalich. Um, but mainly, what I'm wanting to do is just look at the text as far as the language, uh, syntax. Over here, I'll have um, different dictionaries and work on Greek and, and Hebrew grammar and syntax uh, that I will often go to, that I will use, um, that are very, very helpful. Now, once I've done all that really hard work with, with words and, and sentence structures and things like that, that is when, for me, the fun begins. And I have a very, very set way of, of doing this. I start off, always, um, I'll start off with, with John Calvin. And here's Calvin's commentaries. And then, um, from there, don't miss my hunting knife. <laughs> <laughs> um, from there, I, I look at Matthew Henry. I love Matthew Henry. And then I will go down here. Here's Matthew Poole. And then here's John Trapp. And then one of my most favorite old Baptist writers, John Gill. I will look at him. And I will will look at Barnes. Now, just something that's real important. It doesn't mean that every time you look at a commentary, you're going to agree with someone. But even sometimes when you don't agree, it provokes you to think about why you do not agree. It opens up doors, windows, uh, to more meaning in the text. I also go to this, if you're a preacher, um, th this is one of my favorite guys. Uh, Charles Simeon, Expository Outlines on the Whole Bible. 
Now, um, let me just give you, um, for example, I've been working on something for, oh gosh, almost three decades or more, and it's just on the gospel, in which I take every verse in the Bible on, on the person and work of Christ, and I not only do my own work on it, but then I go through, I try to start in the patriarchs um, after the second century, or second century, and then work my way all the way through to Martin Lloyd-Jones. And uh, I guess that's why it's been more than three decades. <laughs> um, but here's some of my favorite uh, guys. Uh, so we have um, J.C. Ryle, and this is his commentary on the Gospels. And then one of my all-time favorite preachers, of course, Martin Lloyd-Jones, here on Romans, and here also on Ephesians. Then, come over here, and, uh, and now we're really getting into some, some good stuff. Here is, uh, all of this is Charles Spurgeon, from here on up, is, uh, is Charles Spurgeon. And he's one of my... Uh, my all-time favorite um, preachers. Uh, I always look at, at what he does, what he writes. Um, then down here is, is Richard Sibbs, another famous Puritan. And then there's Manton down here, who is a great, uh, great writer. And then here's the great theologian, uh, John Owen. These are his works in theology, and then his commentary, seven-volume commentary on the book of Hebrews is, is astounding. And um, then, uh, with regard to the person of Christ, John Flavel is um, some of the most beautiful things I've ever read on the person of Christ. And then one of my favorite guys, they said of him, if you, uh, if you were to cut him, he would bleed uh, the Bible. Uh, this is John Bunyan. And then, not quite as well known, but excellent, is the works of Thomas Brooks. And then here is Thomas Boston. And one of my favorites. I mean, he, he's absolutely amazing. But prepare yourself. <laughs> you know, if you're wanting to look at something really quick to understand what a certain text means, you probably don't want to go here because he's liable to write 60 pages on it. Um, here's the works of William Perkins that have just recently come out from Reformation Heritage. And uh, amazing. Now let's go on down. Here's John Newton from Amazing Grace. Uh, that's what he's best known for. But a great writer. The works of Stephen Sharnock. And then, of course, Jonathan Edwards. And then here is, you, you need to read this. Th these are, these are, this is the letters of Samuel Rutherford. Uh, what I would do is, um, since they are letters, I would put them on my, I'd put this book on my nightstand, and that's how I read through it. Uh, every night before I go to bed, I would read um, Samuel Rutherford. Um, there's the sermons of George Whitfield. Let's see others. Uh, Robert Murray McShane. Anything you can get from him. Um, here are the works, basically, of J.C. Ryle. And then John Murray, a great theologian. Uh, not, not well known, but worthy, uh, is the life and sermons of Edward D. Griffin. And then David Clarkson. Now here's somebody I rely on a lot. It's the complete works of, of Andrew Fuller. Absolutely astounding. Then Payson down there and Warfield. And if you say, well, do you just have all these books? No, I use these books. This is why, as far as I guess a lot of people would go, my, my library isn't that large. It's because um, I most of it is just the classical reformed and Puritan guys that I, I love to read. And um, here's the thing. They're, they're, to study the Bible, there is a sense in which it is academic. 
uh, but it's only academic to some degree. It's, it's far more than academic. It's spiritual. And I want to read men who, who delighted in the person of Christ and who looked at a text uh, looking for Christ. And, and, and so uh, let's see what else. Now, I got my, all my theologians are over here. <laughs> um, They're asking, uh, have you read all these? Well, most of them are the commentaries. You look for the text you're studying, right? You know, and then over here, I have used all these for research, and I mean a lot of research. <laughs> um, it's possible that on my gospel thing that I've been doing for three decades, it's not it's not impossible to see me study four to ten hours in one day, uh, just on trying to comprehend. The glory of Christ in the gospel, and and using these books, like I said, I will um, I'll look at the text myself, but then I'll research it through several centuries. And um, so, here are the confessions. Um, very helpful is Westminster, the 1689. Uh, this is an exposition by Sam Waldron. That's very very good. Um, young people. Let me share something with you. I guess we have time, right? Sure. Okay. There's 287 um, people here. Okay. Let, let me share something with you. Um, the confessions, some of the great confessions. Um, I have the Westminster here. I have um, the 1689. I have the three forms of unity, which are excellent. Um, I can remember reading through these confessions after, years after becoming a Christian. And becoming almost becoming almost angry. You say, why angry? What did they do wrong? They did nothing wrong. But the point is, they said in a concise, thorough manner, they answered so many questions immediately that I had to kind of grapple with for years and years. And there is a thing of, of the wisdom of God being handed down. We must discover the Bible, each generation. We must study it. We must pour over it. But, but the confessions provide us with a wonderful framework and answer many of the questions that we grapple with as new believers. And so I heartily recommend them. Um, here is um, Calvin and Turretin. I, I really, I really uh, like Turretin. Um, there's Biblical Theology by John Owen. Yeah, they were uh, asking about John Owen, I think. Yeah, John Owen is uh, it's amazing. Um, then there's uh, The Merrill of Theology by Ames. This Works of Hugh Binning was uh, really life-changing for me, um, especially with regard to the, the glory of God and the doctrine of God. And then Sharnock, of course, you know, the existence and attributes of God. And then John Gill, who I love, uh, John Brown of Haddington, then um, the Christian's reasonable service is, is grossly, well, in a lot of circles, is grossly overlooked. It is a wealth of, of just of truth. And then, Let me pause you for a second. Uh -huh. Yes, we are going to save this video so you can watch it on IGTV afterwards so you don't have to keep taking screenshots. Yeah, yeah. You can rewatch it. Yeah. And then, of course, there is Reform Dogmatics uh, by Bob Inc. And then there is Charles Hodge, who I love, uh, Shed. Uh, dogmatics. Now we're getting into the more modern stuff. So here's here's one that just came out. Um, this is with uh, Mayhew. It's, it's with John MacArthur, and I'm proud of this one because uh, Dr. MacArthur signed it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but um, you, you, what you have here is is the writings of people who believe the scriptures are in error. Really believe it. That's what makes it important. Do you have a library at home, they asked. I, I used to have this whole library at home, but my wife said, no, when you come home, <laughs> you're going to be home. So all my library <laughs> okay. is, is here. Um, I have... Um, 
a lot of the classics. Let, let's just look here. Oh, this is this is really good. This was done by Dr. Beakey, and it's Puritan Theology for Life. It's very, very good. Um, let's see, what else? I don't want to make this too long. Here's all the the two. These are the big autobiographies of, of George Mueller. All right. And um, very, very precious. Let me let me see here. I wanna Oh a few months ago for about five months I was studying the covenants. And so I looked at the Divine Covenant by Arthur Pink. This one by Douglas Van Dorn. Very good. Um, Christ of the Covenants by Robertson. And Samuel Renahan. I really liked this. The, the Mystery of Christ. And then uh, Pascal Denault on the Distinctives of Baptist Covenant Theology. And so, like I said, I don't have many, I guess, modern books. Not that they're not good, because here's some of them that, uh, that I went to. Uh, let's see, I'm looking... Can you do a uh, greeting to our Spanish speakers in here? They're like, please in Spanish. <laughs> but Hola, speak- <laughs> can't do the whole thing in Spanish. Podemos hacerlo después. Quizás otro otro video en español. Pero son básicamente libros de los reformadores y de los puritanos. Y los evangélicos no um, antiguos. Antiguos. Ahora, all right, let's go back to the, the English here. So um, now, these are basically Puritan and and Reform guys. Where are you? Let's Over see. Here. There you are. And um, but some of these are actually like old reprints that are actually photocopies because they're so old. And um, this. These are the books that I picked out to specifically this whole area to study the person and doctrine of Christ primarily. And so, um, for example, if we would, let me just pick out a few of them. Um, gosh, there's so many. Gospel Fear by Jeremy Burroughs. Um, the Suffering Savior by Krummacher. Um, the Attraction of the Cross. Uh, this was written in 1785. Oh, that seems or cool. Somewhere around there. Looking Unto Jesus. I read this. I had this on my nightstand oh, yeah. and I read through it. Isaac Ambrose. And um, absolutely marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. Um, one of my favorites. Um, this is by William Bates. And it's done by Solid Ground Christian Books. Uh, William Bates lived in the 17th century. And the harmony of the divine attributes in the contrivance and accomplishment of man's redemption. And this is about how. It is only in the cross of Christ that we truly and fully see all the attributes of God revealed. Because down through history, biblical history, the history of redemption, the question is how can God be just and yet pardon wicked men? How can both His mercy and His justice be revealed? And yet we see that made possible through the cross of Christ, where the justice of God was satisfied making mercy possible. Do you have any R.C. Sproul, they ask? <laughs> yes. Um, R.C. Sproul is one of the greatest gifts to uh, to the church. Uh, such a... Wow. Um, his gift... I mean, you can go on their website and even some of the articles that he wrote just a short article can clear up theological problems so much quicker than reading the entire book of someone else. And that was his gift. Without making something light or superficial, he could take profound doctrine and and make it comprehensible uh, to not just the layman, but to, to, to anyone. He could speak on any level. I so appreciate him. Um, 
gosh, it just goes on and on. Old books. Um, and then most of this is about ecclesiology over here and missions. And then, uh, oh, got a, this is my English longbow. I made this one for my daughter, uh, Rowan. And uh, this is my, I have to show this off, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. And this is my, this is more of an American traditional longbow made out of uh, one piece of wood and uh, very, very accurate for hunting. Oh, on this English longbow, I made those out of uh, deer antlers. And uh, so that it would cool. be a traditional English bow. And so I guess this is it. This right. is my, uh, my library. Um, the, one of the things that I would really recommend is um, there are still good books being written. Please don't get me wrong. There are many good authors out there today, but you really want a heavy dose of what we would consider the classics. And um, there was a time in human history when it's like God and his providence decided to give some gifted men in the church that have hardly ever been seen again. Men like, men like John Owen. Um, and so there, it's gift. Now, let me say this, though. This is so very, very important. Um, the greatest need of the day is not for you to uh, accumulate a bunch of books, even if you read them, but it's to read the book. And the greatest thing you can do is Genesis to Revelation over and over and over and over reading the scriptures, memorizing the scriptures, meditating upon the scriptures. You know, I don't want to sound too mystical, but honestly, it's almost as if you can tell the difference when you see um, a young man, two young men, let's say, that both seem to have a solid grasp of theology, and one has gotten it only by reading good books. And the other, though, although he hasn't neglected reading good books, has his it came out of his grappling and wrestling with the scriptures uh, nothing you you if you just read books and you don't read the bible you know what you almost become like a parrot who can say all kinds of right stuff but there's just not a whole lot of reality to it and and you can't hide it people know there's not a lot of reality to it and also only the scriptures you see, you can grow in the knowledge of books, and sometimes it will increase your pride. Uh, if you grow in the knowledge of Scripture, it will increase your brokenness and your humility. And so, you know, listen, if you're planning on being a minister, you should be living in the Word. You should be there hours a day. Hours a day. It's what we do. We study the Bible and we pray. I was just teaching a group from, uh, from France uh, through Zoom, and one of the things that I told them is that we always have to realize what our warfare, what are our weapons of warfare. Our weapons of warfare are the Word of God, intercessory prayer, and a holy life, and a holy life. Uh, let, let me see if I miss something before we go. Um, or while you're looking. So I see all your questions, but we're going to have a, a live Q&A sometime in the future. So sorry I couldn't get to all of them. Are there any questions that we can't answer while we're looking? Uh, let's see. A lot on Leonard Ravenhill. What about Leonard Ravenhill? Do you have any on him? You know, um, I do have a few. And uh, he was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer and a man of, of great, great conviction. Here's a book that I, I can't go without. Um, right, yeah. of, of all the people that have lived outside of the scriptures, George Mueller is my hero of heroes. And this is a simple little autobiography. And um, it's the autobiography of George Mueller. And if you look, you can see the pages are all yellow. And that's mm -hmm. because I've had it since I was about 22 years old. And this book and is, has been foundational in my life. 
uh, heart cries built on the foundation of this with regard to um, starting the mission. He cared for orphans. He never made his need known. He could tell people what he was doing, but he would never prod or manipulate God's people with regard to finances. And if you read the autobiography, especially this short version, you will see countless answers to prayer, secret prayer. And God, the God of George Mueller still exists today. Um, another book that I want to point out if you're not, if you haven't like studied a lot with regard to the Puritans, um, I use this book probably, you know, several times a week. And it's a guide to the Puritans by Robert P. Martin. And uh, what you do is you look up any topic, um, biblical studies, blessedness, um, drawing near to God, perseverance, whatever. And it will give you a list of places to go in the Puritans where you can study that. And even most helpful, there's an index with regard to every scripture in the Bible. Like, for example, Gen Exodus 33:20. What's good thing has been said there by a Puritan? Well, Andrew Fuller wrote on passages apparently contradictory in Genesis 32, 30. So you can see that that it would be really helpful to go to any passage in the Bible and be able to look up some of the things the Puritans, or at least give you the reference to where to look up. Another thing that is extremely helpful that I use almost on a daily basis is the Encyclopedia uh, Puritanica project, in which I can go on this. It was done many, many years ago. I don't even have a work in some <laughs> computers now. But... <clears throat> in which you click on any verse and it'll have not only the reference to Puritans, but also will actually have the material. So it's all very helpful. And I hope this has been helpful to you and, uh, and everything. This is where I spend most of my day, every day, about five, six days a week, and uh, in here studying. And so, but remember, remember, the, the world doesn't need just a bunch of academics. The world needs men and women of God who are like old Bunyan over here, that if you cut their veins, they would bleed the scriptures. That's what we need. And that's, I hope this has been helpful and I hope it's been a blessing to you. Uh, don't go out and get in debt by buying a bunch <laughs> of books. Read your Bible and then start uh, gathering the classics.